Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Father in heaven, we thank you uh, for this uh, time to get into your word this morning. We pray that you would open up our eyes to see you more clearly. We pray that you'd use Pastor Izzy now to, to teach each one of us and draw us ever closer to you. Mm-hmm. We ask that now in Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Guys, would you turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 as we get to continue our study. Well, last week we were in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 where we saw that there was a whole bunch of differing gifts given to the church by the Holy Spirit. And we saw that it was up to the Holy Ghost to give to each person as, as it says He wills, not as we will. It, it's God who gets to choose what gift goes to each of us or multiple gifts in some cases. Some of you have many gifts that are given to you by the Holy Ghost. And the key was we went over is not how many you have, but that you do one thing with the gift. What was it? You use it. You use it to the building up of the body of Christ. And today we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 13, and we're going to see that if you have a gift and you lack one quality, one spiritual quality, the Bible says it doesn't really matter because without this quality, you're nothing. Okay, You can have all the gifts. There's some people very, very gifted, but they lack this quality. And this is the king when it comes to qualities that God desires in us because we find this is the one that he says all men will know that we are his disciples when we have this quality. What quality is that? Love. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 13 this morning. We pick up, it says, if I speak with the tongues of men or of the tongues of angels, I mean, you're fluent in multiple languages, even angelic languages. It says, but I do not have love. I have become a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. That's a nice compliment, isn't it? You're a noisemaker. Just because you can speak multiple languages, even angelic languages by the gifting of God's Spirit, if you don't have love, you're nothing. You're just a big noisemaker. That's it, a noisy gong. Anyone ever heard of gong? Remember the gong show? Remember when they hit that gong? Gong! You know, you're out of here. I, I never associated that gong sound with good because of that show. That show just kind of like Im- imprinted on me that, you know, that gong, and it, you're out. That act didn't make it, right? Every time they hit that thing, it was like, end of, end of, remember that? Some of you look too young. You don't remember this. Don't worry. There's a few heads going, uh-huh, uh-huh, I remember that. That's what you become when you don't have love. You could be speaking all the words in all multiple languages, but without love. You're just a big noisemaker. A clanging cymbal. Oh, that's a nice sound. Doesn't Paul pick really good, you know, word pictures for you to, I mean, and in this case, they're they're word sounds. You know, noisy gong, clanging cymbal. That's That's what you become without love. You can say all the right things. But you know, it's, it's funny how when we say something, and if we don't say it with love, how, how much harm can we do with our words? Oh, man. I tell you, I think the worst pains I've ever experienced in this life have nothing to do with the bones that I've broken, nothing to do with, you know, injuries to my body. They don't even, they don't even compare to the pain that comes when someone speaks a harsh word to you, a stabbing, cutting word, and it's not in love, it's in spite or hate or to tear you down. Paul says, I don't care if you can say those words in different languages, even angelic languages. If you don't say the words, in other words, you don't use that gift of tongues with love, just a noisemaker. You have become a noisemaker. And that's, you know, sometimes I think why the world looks at Christianity and they see different sects of Christianity that some of them practice the, the using of the gift of tongues in their, in their assembling together. They all 
break out into speaking in tongues and and it sounds like you know it sounds like a noisy room to me have you, any of you uh, experienced a congregational uh, meeting where the where the folks all broke into speaking in different languages all at once to me it's it's not biblical to do in fact the bible actually says don't do it it says when you come together in the assembly that you're supposed to, if someone has a tongue, you're supposed to take turns. So it's just like speaking in a conversation. I mean, everyone starts speaking all at the same time. It's just a bunch of noise. He said you're supposed to take turns, and you're only supposed to take turns and do it in a congregational setting. I don't know why that some of these groups don't read the Bible. Because it makes it really simple. It says do it in, a, in an orderly manner, and only do it. If someone breaks out and starts speaking in another language in the middle, they just start talking really loud in, in, in Spanish. And maybe a few of you know Spanish, but everyone else is going, what are they saying? Or Italian, or whatever language they choose, and, and, and they start to speak. The Bible says if there isn't someone else that is gifted with the gift of what? Interpretation of tongues, then tell them just hold on to that for later. I mean, it's not that God is saying you don't get to use your gift, but there's a purpose and there's a time for those gifts to be used. And every gift in the Holy Ghost, every single one of them, has a purpose of the overall mission statement of all the gifts is to the building up of the body of Christ. Every gift will complement and work together to build up the believers, not tear them down or freak them out. Not to make him go, whoa. Man, the, the things of the Spirit are first pure and peaceable, gentle. They're, they're the things of God's Spirit. You know, when God's Spirit touches someone, what a beautiful thing it is. I mean, what if the person needs a gift of healing? What, what if, and God touches their body and heals them. Or maybe they have a broken heart. I mean, I'm talking really broken hearted over something. Isn't it beautiful when the Holy Spirit touches a person and mends that broken heart? And maybe you're the one God wants to send in to help for the mending. Maybe you're going to be the instrument he uses to, to bring that touch of his grace. What a sweet thing. But see, all of these gifts, if they don't operate with love, look at the next verse, verse 2. If I prophesy, now this we'll see in, when we get to chapter 14, is the greatest listed of the gifts. The gift of prophecy. Not tongues. I know there are certain sects that say tongues is the greatest. No, it's not. In fact, Paul tells us it's the least amongst the gifts. The gift of prophecy. To say not what man thinks, but what does a prophet say? Thus saith who? The Lord. The Lord. Isn't it nice to know what the Lord has to say? We, don't, we get enough input what men say about stuff. We need, God, what do you want to say? I, I joked last week, I said, wouldn't it be nice you have a friend with this gift? Maybe, uh, you know, we, we got Dave St. Clair, my dear brother, I've known from in the Lord from back in Arizona days. Say so he has a gift of prophecy. Just the Lord tells him to say things on his behalf, on the Lord's behalf. So he doesn't tell his idea. He says, thus says the Lord. And you're you're good friends with him. It's like, I, I call that love. You know, you're, you're in a bind. You need to know, God, what, what do you want me to do? Just speak to me. Dave goes, hey, I got a word from the Lord for you. Just sent down the message to tell you this. P pocket prophet, I call it, you know. You got a good friend that's got that gift. Wouldn't that be, who here would like to have a friend with that gift? Just a handy for those days when you're going, I don't know, God. Please speak. Has anyone ever done this? You really needed to know, God, what do you want me to do? And you sat there wrestling and wrestling. And isn't it nice when the Lord has someone on his behalf say, not what they think. I was just listening to CSN on the way to church today, and it was earlier this morning, Mike Kessler was on. Pastor Mike said that in his early days of faith, he found out this gift was really real. He had brought his sister to church and she was praying, oh God, I don't know if I'm supposed to marry this guy. And Mike said he had helped some fella had come by and had his problem with his van. And he said, could I, Pastor, could I tear apart my engine <laughs> in your parking lot and work on it? You know, I, there's making a weird rattling noise and I don't know. And 
Okay, what's he going to do? Just guess. Yes. yes. Okay, go ahead, mister. So the guy stays here in the week tearing down this thing, and, and he said he came to church service the next Sunday in a, in a wife beater, he called it, a, a, a white tank top. And, he, and, he, and he's a pretty, he said, kind of, you know, burly-looking, rough-looking dude. And he sat, how many heard this this morning on the radio? He sat right in the front. And, you know, Christians are all probably going, ooh, what's this guy doing up front? And, and, then, and then Pastor Mike is starting the service, and he says, can I say something? <laughs> he said, well, just guess what Mike did. <laughs> He's like, going to go, uh, he was, uh, well, and he'd been around the guy all week. He was like, all right, go ahead. And he, he stood up, and he said, the guy turned to the audience, and he said, the Lord wants you to know and he pointed to one of the fellows and said, and spoke, thus says the Lord, the Lord wants you to know this. And, 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 and you're a man, and I can't remember the exact words he, he spoke. You can listen to the, to the archive thing on the radio if you like on CSN. But, but he spoke to the guy, a, a very specific word. And the guy was like, oh, that's like literally the answer to what he had been praying about. And his sister, who he was praying for, was with him. And she's sitting there going, I just want to know, God, am I supposed to marry this guy? And guess what the guy in the wife beater did next? He turned right to her and goes, and the Lord wants you to know. And spoke right to her. Didn't even know her. And he's just like, he said he was a new Christian. This whole thing about the Holy Spirit is, you know, like it's just kind of coming to his understanding that God's Spirit is really real. And that God's Spirit really has gifts that he gives to the church to help build up the church. And he said, this is the, he said, this is like one of the most clearest times he ever saw God have a word of knowledge shared or a word of prophecy shared right on the spot. But it wasn't even the pastor. Don't you, I like this story. Because this just tells me, do you need the pastor to have the words of knowledge or the words of prophecy? No. I might just give it to my brother here and he might speak it to you. Because God's big. And he gives his gifts to whoever he wills. And as long as we use those gifts in love, the whole body gets built up. I mean, even if you weren't the one getting the word of knowledge, but you ha what if you were the one sitting next to him? I mean, Mike was, and he was going, how'd you like that, sis? I mean, literally, the guy didn't know them at all, and he just looked at you. He, uh, he was sharing this, and he said, the Lord really has a way. Style points, you know, by God. The Lord just knows how to show us that he's real. But see, he says, if you, if you can have words of prophecy, and you know all mysteries, all knowledge, you can answer all those questions. Yeah? <laughs> Got to listen to the CSN radio show. Not telling you. <laughs> No, he didn't. It, I had to turn off the radio at that point because we got to the beach and had to unload. <laughs> I just thought, I just got the part that he it spoke to to Mike, how the Lord is real, how the Holy Spirit is real. You know, when I, I, I was anyone else here raised Catholic. Did did you learn to when you'd pray in the name of the Father, the Son? We would make the sign of the cross and the what? What's this part across the heart here this way? The Holy Ghost. What was that? The, the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Ghost. That's the same thing. By the way, there's synonymous. In case I'm, I actually remember asking this question as a new believer. What's the difference between the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit? Nothing. But I didn't know, okay? I mean, because my whole life being raised Catholic, he was only called the Holy Ghost, not the Holy Spirit. I didn't know that that was just an alternative, you know, way of saying the Holy Ghost the Holy Spirit. You're talking about God's Spirit. The Holy One. So, if you have these gifts from the Holy Spirit, and they're wonderful gifts. We went over them last week in detail. If you want, you can listen to that on the YouTube channel. Um, and uh, it's linked to our AmazingGraceKona.com page. Just right on the front says, follow us on YouTube. You can go listen to the differing gifts that God gives. There's so many beautiful gifts. But none of them mean a thing. Mahalo for joining us. 
If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.